Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third and final part of this lecture on the third energy package. In this final part, I'd like to talk about the regulation of, of grids and how national regulatory authorities conduct their obligations and what that means for market actors. Now, a key feature of the third package is the emphasis on independent regulation. National regulatory authorities are required to operate independently, not just of the industry, but also of national governments. Now, why is that so important? Well, the European institutions were very concerned that national regula regulatory authorities might be subject to government influence. Uh, and that would then frustrate the operation of networks as, if you like, European energy highways, where everything, uh, ev energy could flow from one country to the other uh, without any obstacles. So it was very important for the European institutions to anchor this concept of independence of the national regulatory authorities into the third package. Now, when it comes to the, the obligations and the powers of national regulatory authorities, these powers are primarily focused on the way the transmission and distribution systems operate. And that means, in fact, that the regulatory authorities have to approve ex ante most of the terms and conditions of uh, third party access, the tariffs that are charged to users of the grid, uh, the terms and conditions for all sorts of balancing services, ancillary services, these all have to be approved by regulatory authorities. At the same time, there are many features of the regulation of the energy market that are not necessarily left to the sole power of the national regulatory authority. For example, final end user prices, the price the consumer pays for his or her electricity or gas. Now here, the directives allow the member states to um, delegate the tasks of supervising or overseeing those prices to other authorities. These might be consumer authorities, not necessarily the energy regulator. And indeed, in many member states, it's still the case that energy prices are regulated by national legislation. And so the national regulatory authority has perhaps little power to determine how those prices are fixed. But when it comes to transmission tariffs and terms of access for networks, here the regulatory authority should operate then entirely independently from any governmental influence. Now the principles uh, on which tariffs should be approved are set out in very general terms in the directives and indeed in the regulations. But as I explained in the first part of my lecture, the concept of delegated legislation has become increasingly important. And by adopting delegated legislation in the form of network codes, many of the operational aspects of networks are indeed being far more closely and deeply harmonised. This means then that when a grid manager wants to know uh, the legal framework in which he or she has to operate, they have to consider the, the European directives, the regulations, the implementing national rules, the regulatory authorities, codes and requirements, but also increasingly the requirements of these network codes. Now, that said, I'd like to emphasise that uh, so far we do not have uniform tariffs one toll cost, if you like, or one toll fee that applies to an entire European energy highway. We're not there yet. But what we do have is an increasing level of harmonisation on the way these tariffs have to be calculated and the way they are applied. So let me give you um, a, a, an example. Uh, in many countries, it has been the practice to charge both producers uh, as well as consumers for their use of the grid. So producers, the load factor, if you like, um, pays a share of, of, of the, the, the tariff, the transmission tariff, as does the user. However, 
on the basis of the harmonisa harmonisation principles introduced by the directives and further expanded in the regulations and in these network codes, uh, only consumers should actually pay for the use of the network. So all the costs of the, network, of the networks should be charged to consumers and not to producers. So there's some degree of uniformity now being introduced, albeit that that does not result in a uniform tariff as such. But it's important to understand that as these network codes are rolled out, um, increasingly the conditions of operations of networks and particularly transmission networks are becoming much, much more deeply harmonised. And in time, one might well see a far greater level of uniformity, uh, not necessarily in the end price for using a grid network, but certainly in the way charges are imposed on those users. Finally, I would like just to mention that regulation uh, of transmission and distri distribution grids is not only about achieving fair costs for users. There are other factors which na national regulatory authorities are also required to take on board and these also have implications for grid managers. There are two in particular uh, that it's worthwhile stressing here. First of all, the, the directives require that TSOs and DSOs take into account long-term security of supply and reliability of energy systems. This means then that national regulators can in fact require the network uh, operators, the grid managers then, uh, to ensure that there is adequate investment, to ensure then that these networks are capable of transporting energy from many different locations uh, to final users. So security of supply, the obligation uh, to ensure security of supply can have far-reaching consequences for grid managers and their operations. A second aspect um, which the third package introduces as an obligation on uh, grid managers is to promote uh, environmental objectives to ensure then that uh, climate change goals established by the European uh, institutions will also be achieved. This can mean then that uh, TSOs and DSOs are required to give preference to the dispatch of certain forms of, of renewable energy, wind or solar or geothermal, uh, over and above conventional electricity produced from coal or gas or, or nuclear. And so it's possible for member states relying on uh, the third package to instruct grid managers, TSOs, DSOs, to ensure that wind energy uh, is given priority, for example, or solar energy over and above any other form of energy, irrespective of whether that is cost uh, efficient or not. This means then that the internal energy market uh, is a complex thing. It is not just based on achieving uh, the transportation of electricity or gas at all low at the lowest cost. Uh, there are various objectives that have to be reconciled. This makes, of course, the tasks of grid managers very complex. And I hope that when uh, we have a chance to discuss this further at the seminar, uh, that we can explore the many dimensions of this complexity in greater detail. And I hope that this brief introduction has allowed you uh, to understand the context in which European law shapes the operation uh, of networks and the tasks of grid managers. And I thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to our discussions. Thank you.